Hello, and thank you for joining us for this presentation. Today, I will tell you about some new mass spec technologies and solutions developed by Brooker for environmental analysis in general and PFAS in particular. Environmental analysis was never a simple task, but as time goes on and our awareness of environmental problems grows, the challenges of environmental analysis grow with it. The number of target analytes and compound classes that need to be monitored and quantified is increasing, requirements for lipids of detection and quantitation become more stringent, demand for analytical services and workload go on the up and up, and more and more often, instead of asking the question, does it meet the regulations, people ask questions like, is it safe? implying that strictly targeted analysis may no longer be sufficient. All of these questions and requirements become even more challenging when we get on topic of PFAS. First of all, because there are so many of them. Thousands of PFAS compounds are known today, and the number is growing. Only a fraction of them is currently regulated, but these requirements are steadily evolving. On top of that, PFAS compounds tend to form plentiful isomers making their analysis even more difficult. All of this puts a heavy burden on the analytical instrumentation used for this purpose. Conventional triple-quadruple mass spectrometers are the workhorses of environmental applications, trusted and well-established. However, their capabilities can only be stretched so far, as the sensitivity and specificity start to drop as number of analytes in a target panel exceeds a couple of hundred. High-resolution time-of-flight mass spectrometers are free from this limitation by design. Not only their sensitivity remains constant regardless of the number of analytes that we're looking for, but their specificity is much higher as well due to their high-resolution and accurate mass measurement. Brooklyn mass spec portfolio includes instruments of many types, from nominal mass triple quads to high-resolution time-of-flight to extreme resolution magnetic resonance MS. So, when we say that one technology performs better in a certain application than another, we have quite a few of them to compare against each other. However, in the case of PFAS, we found that high resolution mass spectrometry may not always be sufficient to address all the growing challenges at once, and turned to a new technology that we call TeamStuff. The TeamStuff is a tandem of high-resolution accurate mass QTOF MS and the high-resolution trapped ion mobility spectrometer. This combination allows us to separate and identify analytes not only by the mass-to-charge ratios and isotopic patterns of their ions and fragments, but also by their collisional cross-sections. Collisional cross-section, or CCS value, is a statistical representation of a molecule size and parameter defining its interaction with the media around it. Good visual analogy would be these two sailing vessels on the right. One with more sails has a greater collisional cross-section, so to say, and stronger interaction with the wind. One with less sails has smaller collisional cross-section, and its interaction with the wind is weaker. In other words, if with mass spectrometry we're measuring masses of target molecules, then with trapped ion mobility spectrometry, we're measuring their sizes. And of course, that's very interesting, but what benefits can this team stuff technology offer for PFAS analysis? Well, apparently, there are quite a few. Firstly, trapped ion mobility allows to separate PFAS isomers, even in those cases when it cannot be done with chromatography and high resolution mass spectrometry. Secondly, CCS values can be used as a filtering criteria to clean up chemical background and improve the sensitivity in complex matrices. And thirdly, CCS values uh, accurately measured by the team staff become another identification criteria for targeted analytes, just like accurate mass, isotopic pattern, or the retention time. Here is an example of a typical sample analysis report where we see all detected analytes having their measured collisional cross-section values within 1% from the database values. Obviously, adding this identification criterion improves the confidence of compound identification quite significantly. 
Separation of PFAS isomers is a challenging task, even for high-resolution mass spectrometer. Unfortunately, PFAS compounds often tend to form multiple isomers. In this example, we have four of them in one sample. Those that coelude would typically be indistinguishable from one another, because their lamental compositions and molecular weights are exactly the same. However, with trap time mobility, we can tell them apart with confidence, as you can see on the color-coded diagram on the left, and even quantify them one by one. Finally, collisional cross-section values can be used as a filtering criteria to clean up chemical background. In this example, we're looking at a dilution series of a PFAS compound measured without collisional cross-section filtering above and with steam stuff collisional cross-section filtering below. As you can see, the improvement of signal-to-noise ratio from CCS filtering can be quite substantial, effectively improving the sensitivity in complex matrices. Another benefit of employing the TeamStop technology is that speed of analysis and throughput can be increased several fold. In this example, we're looking at the separation and identification of 240 target analytes. Conventional method is relying on a long chromatographic gradient and takes 20 minutes to run the sample. The team stuff achieves the same level of separation and higher identification confidence with only 5 minutes gradient, compensating for it with combination of high-resolution trapped eye mobility separation and high-resolution mass spectrometry. As they say, time is money, right? One of the most recent technological improvements from Brooker is the new heated vacuum-isolated electrostatic ion source with active exhaust, or VAP-HESI for short. Historically, nominal mass triple-quadruple mass spectrometers reign supreme in the targeted analysis applications because of their unsurpassed sensitivity. The new VAP-HESI source brings Brooker high-resolution instruments to a similar level by boosting their sensitivity by an order of magnitude. A high-resolution accurate mass instrument with a triple-quad level of sensitivity is a very serious achievement. On top of that, the VAP-HESI source reduces matrix effects and contamination buildup by carefully managing the gas flow inside the source. Not only it is very sensitive and uh, gentle to the analytes, but also extremely robust. To give an example, here is a comparison of a PFAS mixture analysis done with the same instrument using a typical ESI source on the top chromatogram and the new VAP HESI source on the bottom one. As you can see, the sensitivity improvement with VAP HESI is approximately tenfold. Three out of nine PFAS compounds in this sample could not be detected without VAP HESI. The TeamStop instrument with VAP HESI ion source also demonstrates very respectable quantitation capabilities. As you can see in this example, the linearity of the calibration curve and the coefficient of determination are quite excellent, over four orders of magnitude of the dynamic range. You can notice that both the extracted time chromatogram and the extracted time mobiligram on the right are very clear and show good signal-to-noise ratio at the lowest point of the calibration curve. Of course, any instrument or workflow these days are only as good as the software that supports them. All targeted screening and quantitation workflows that we have reviewed so far are supported by Brooker Task Package. Task stands for Targeted Analysis, Screening and Quantitation, and it's a highly automated software that fully integrates all team stuff capabilities, including the collisional cross-section filtering and uh, isomer separation. For non-targeted analysis, Brooker provides another software package called Metabascape. This software includes a toolbox of very powerful algorithms for identification of unknowns and statistical analysis of multiple samples at once. Just like the task software package, Metabascape takes a full advantage of the collisional cross-section measurements enabled by the TeamStuff technology. To get some idea of the Metabascape functionality, Let's review an example that we worked on with our collaborators from the University of Amsterdam. Here, a water sample was spiked with a PFAS mixture. Automated data processing in Metabascape 
revealed more than one thousand features or analytes present in the sample. Completely non-targeted annotation of all present analytes is the first step of a typical Metabascape workflow. Now that we have more than 1,000 unknown features revealed, the question becomes which of them are PFAS related? To help us answer this question, Metabascape integrates a very powerful tool called Kendrick Mass Defect Analysis. In this analysis, the Kendrick Mass Defect is plotted as a function of a nominal Kendrick Mass for ions observed in the mass spectrum. Ions of the same family, for example the CF2-based PFAS, homologs have the same Kendrick mass defect but different nominal Kendrick mass and their position along the horizontal lines on the plot. Here, we can, here you can see an example of such distribution. According to the OECD list that contains more than 3200 PFAS compounds, most of them have mass defects between minus 0.25 and plus 0.1. Knowing that, we can use this parameter to separate potentially PFAS analytes from all other features in the sample. On this Kendrick mass defect plot, we can see 118 CF2-based analytes that have mass defects within the established range and are potentially PFAS compounds. Note how clearly these PFAS candidates are separated from all other features found in the sample going from a thousand of complete unknowns to roughly a hundred of PFAS candidates in a single step is a pretty good progress. Now that we narrowed our search, we can use the EPA 533 PFAS list to see if any of our candidates are on it. It appears that we get 22 hits. However, if we take a closer look at the resulting list, we can notice that three entries on it are related to the same LPFOS compound. We get the same accurate mass, same isotopic pattern, and of course the same molecular formula, yet Metabascape insists that we have three different analytes. The reason is the difference in collisional cross-sections between them, meaning that these are three different isomers with the same elemental composition. Notice that uh, we detected them automatically without actually doing anything. After 22 PFAS candidates in the sample have been annotated with the EPA list, we can get molecular formulas for the other 93 PFAS candidates that remain unknown. Metabascape automates this process, providing us with an annotation list that looks like this. Calculation of the elemental compositions for the unknowns is done with a software tool called Smart Formula. Its algorithm starts with the accurate mass of a measured peak, identifies molecular formulas that could provide this mass within the boundaries of allowed chemical elements, and then selects the best match based on the comparison of the predicted isotopic patterns of each of these candidate formulas and the actually measured mass spectra. As already mentioned, this process is fully automated and all unknowns get molecular formulas assigned to them. Of course, molecular formulas are not the whole story, and we may want to know molecular structures. The next step to get there is made with an other software tool called Compound Crawler. Its algorithm goes online to all your favorite databases, such as ChemSpider and PubChem, and retrieves a list of all known structural candidates for the given molecular formula. Typically, the larger molecule is, the more structural candidates we will get. However, we can pick the most likely ones based on the number of references they have on the databases. Still, at this point, we may have several structural candidates without full certainty which one is actually present in our sample. To answer this question, we employ another software tool found in the Metabascape package and called Metfrag. Its algorithm performs a simulation of an MSMS experiment for a given structural candidate and compares predicted fragments with the actual experimental data. The structural candidate predicted to generate a fragmentation pattern that best matches the measured MSMS spectra is the most likely hit. To verify our choice of the molecular structure, we can use yet another software tool called CCS Predict. As its name implies, this algorithm takes the molecular structure we have deemed the most likely 
and calculates its predicted collisional cross-section. In this example, the CCS values predicted for several structural candidates are within less than 5% from the measured value. This is not always enough to confirm the exact match, but helps to eliminate the less likely candidates. So, with this workflow we went from over 1,000 of unknowns in a given water sample to a few dozen of fully annotated PFAS compounds. And we've done it with a minimal effort on our part and with maximum certainty in the final result. With that, I hope that this short presentation helped you to get a better picture of the state-of-the-art Brooklyn technologies and workflows that can be used for PFAS analysis. Thank you for your attention.